Hey again, welcome to another video on this channel and today we will find out if your functions that you write are actual view composables or just plain function with a simple checklist. So stay tuned and let's figure that out. Okay, before we get into all the details, let's set a little agenda for the video. First, we'll figure out what a composable actually is according to the docs and what that explanation actually means. Then I will present you a very short checklist, just three items to see if the function you write are actually composables. And then we will use this checklist together with a few examples to determine if they're plain functions or real view composables. So what actually is that composable term, right? We all use that every now and then, but what does it actually mean? And according to the view documentation, it says that a composable is a function that leverages views composition API to encapsulate and reuse stateful logic. And now you might be like, okay, what exactly does that mean? Well, let's start with the stateful logic part. If you have, let's say an array of numbers and you want to return the sum of these numbers in a function, there's not much state. You give something in, you do some array operations, calculations, reduce function for loops, whatever, and return something. You don't track some internal state. While on the other hand, if you say, hey, I have some kind of user object and that changes after I fetch the user from an API, that might look different. Or you say, hey, I want to check if the mouse is still on the page. That's also some state, is it or is it not? And you want to update that. And the other crucial part, of course, is that you have to use views composition API for that because you can also use DOM operations to check on some state and some listeners, but that doesn't necessarily make it a composable. So it's very important to keep these things in mind, stateful logic and views composition API. And now let's jump to the checklist and have a look at the three checks I've prepared for you to figure out if the functions you've written are composables or not. Let's start with the first one. And by the way, one of these checks is enough to actually say, hey, this is a view composable. So the first one is, if your function that you've written uses other composables like a use fetch or something from you, view use, for example, then it is a composable because composables themselves can only be used in the script setup function, other composables, because well, you can compose them, or also sometimes in lifecycle hooks. So if that's the case, congrats, you've already written a view composable. And it's very important to use that composable only in the just mentioned occasions, because otherwise there can be problems. The second check is if the function you've written uses a lifecycle hook or multiples like on mounted, on before unmount, and so on, so on. If that's the case, well, congrats, that's also a composable. And once again, you should only use these in other composables, script setup, or like the setup function in general, or if you want that in lifecycle hooks. Of course, there are also utilities that allow, oh, hey, if it's in a component, then execute this on a mounted lifecycle hook, otherwise like execute the function right away. Um, so it's also a way to write some kind of hybrids, but here we focus mainly on distinguishing between utils and composables straight away. And the last of these three parts is what we've talked about in the beginning, the stateful logic. So if you have some kind of ref that holds a user object, notification, some information, and there is the function that exposes that ref, but also other functions to change that, well, then that's also a composable. And there you go. These are the three checks to figure out if your function is a composable or not. So now we should apply them. Let's straight away jump into the code examples. All right, we start with the first example. We have some kind of function called interval function. We take a callback that takes any kind of callback function. We have an interval apparently in milliseconds. Then we set a timer here. Um, for a set interval later on, we have a cleanup function or clean function here. It says if there's a timer, let's clear the interval and set it to null. And on mounted, we say, okay, if the interval is, well, actually positive and at least one, then let's set up the timer. And on the front mount, we call the clean function. Okay, and let's uh, go through the checklist, right? We start with, does it use other composables? No, nothing in there. Okay, not a composable yet. Let's see, does it use life cycle hooks? Oh yeah, absolutely. Unmounted, on before unmount. So we already know this is a composable. 
And even if there's no ref in here, because, well, it's enough to have this as a very simple variable that we can update, it is still composable because it's tied to Fuse Composition API and the lifecycle hooks of components. Okay, so this one is a composable. We should name it use interval function, and we're good to go. Let's have a look at the second one. So we have another function called onUser speaks German that returns a Boolean. And here we check, okay, does speak German based on the languages? Check if navigator languages, if some of these languages start with DE. If not, return false. Then we say, did users see German notification already? We check the local storage here. If that's the case, return false. And then we do some other things here, which are not that important. And that's it. So if we ignore this part here, because there's no code here yet, is this as it is a composable? Let's see. Does it use other composables? Nope, so far no. Does it use lifecycle hooks? No, also nothing there. And does it have stateful logic? No, also not, it's just a few Boolean checks. Of course, we should only execute it on the client side because navigator and local storage are not available on the server side, but that's not the point. In the end, what might come here determines if it's a composable or not. Like, if we here need to invoke something like, I don't know, add notification um, from uh, another composable, that might be one. But if we just say, I don't know, alert, okay, then it's not. So in the way we've written that here, it's not a composable at all. But whatever comes in here might change that. So, so far, no. Otherwise, it might be. And how about the third example here? Here we have a function user. And the user here is an object holding uh, right now a value of null, might be changed in the future. You have a computed history that evaluates something out of that user object if it exists and it's uh, not nullish. Then we have a function fetch user that actually sets the user value to whatever comes back from the API call. I've shortened that a little bit down here because we don't need the whole check if okay and uh, like move it to, to JSON, transform it, we ignore that. And maybe we have some more helpers here optionally. And then we return the user, maybe as read only, which is always a good practice if we don't want our users to change that. Fetch user and the history. Okay, let's, let's go through that. Is this a composable or not? Once again, our checklist. Does it use other composables? Nope, nothing in here, just a plain fetch API and that's it. Okay, does it use lifecycle hooks? Nope, also not here. And the last one, does it have stateful logic? And the clear answer here is yes, we have this user object here that is changed through this fetch user function and it's updated. So if we return that, even as read only, then in our application, we could have some kind of watch on it and say, hey, if the user value changes, do this and this, um, do that. So yeah, this one is definitely composable because it holds stateful logic over here. So let's rename that to use user. And we know this is a composable. And last but not least, this is a very short one. So is this a composable? Um, outside our function here, we have a definition of number format from the Intel API, and we export, or like we, we destructure here that format function. What do we do here? We create a function that returns this one. And does it use other composables? Well, no, this is just plain browser API. This is not composable. Does it use any, any lifecycle hooks? Also no, nope, no lifecycle hooks here. And how about stateful logic? Is there anything stateful in here? No, not at all. So in this case, this is not a composable. Actually, we probably wouldn't even need a function exporting that. We could probably just straight away uh, export it here. So let's say export default format, and that would be it. So this is a plain utility. This is um, no composable at all. And we went through them all. Great. So we figured out if things are composables or not, once again, after knowing what a composable is and with that easy three-step checklist to figure out if a function is a composable or not, I think you're good to go. Of course, there's always some leeway and sometimes it really 
depends a bit, especially with this hybrid composables that I just mentioned, where I say, hey, if you're in a view component, then use unmounted, otherwise just execute the function. Um, but other than that, I think you're ready to go to figure out if your functions are composables or not. Questions left? Any tips you might have known that uh, I missed out? As usual, please drop them below. I'm watching all the comments and I'm happy to respond and interact and discuss. And yeah, um, this is that. Stay tuned for the next video. Happy hacking and see you around.